Hi, I'm Ross, and I'm here with my friend Grant, and we are going to be talking about the Mitchells versus the Machines, which I think at this point, I'm just going to call it, this is the best movie of the year, right? By a wide margin, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, I don't even really know where to start, because I love every second of this movie so much. There is nothing bad about this movie. Mm -hmm. This movie is just perfection all the way through. Every time I revisit it, I go through the exact same like emotional journey i cry at the same parts i laugh at the same parts it's a movie made up of just pure creativity and imagination i've seen spider-verse you would think that they set the bar way too high for themselves <laughs> because that movie is amazing also but mitchell's versus the machines had me questioning like is this my favorite animated movie now, like, of all time? I think I could fairly say it is. I don't know what Phil Lord and Chris Miller know that everyone else in Hollywood doesn't, but they should share these secrets. <laughs> After all these years, I'm finally gonna meet my people. So this movie follows the Mitchell family as they embark on a cross-country road trip to take their daughter Katie to film school and a machine apocalypse happens in the middle of it, which obviously, you know, interrupts the road trip slightly. They will never, ever, 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 ever turn evil. Oh no. The movie doesn't waste a single idea with the idea of a modern machine uprising. It feels weird to say, but this felt like the most intimidating version of a machine apocalypse, even though it's very sanitized and very clean and safe yeah. for kids. It Just seeing the scale to which we've computerized everything around us and that we honestly, as a species, almost can't function without it. And the gorgeous visuals that they bring that with, oh and, the, God, and, yes. and the sound effects as well, just bring this tried and true, like, family journey story right into the modern age in such a great way. Yeah, the structure is really familiar, but at no point does it feel predictable or tired. It, it uses that traditional structure perfectly. The foundation of this story is so strong, and I think so universally accessible on some level for everyone that I honestly can't imagine someone not liking this movie. If I ran into someone on the street and they said they didn't like this movie, I would ask what was wrong with them. And we'll create a new, better world without humans. The most impressive thing about this movie to me was that it was able to balance the fantastical machine uprising hijink stuff with a really really incredible story about family just so emotionally resonant every time i see that f***ing moose i tear <laughs> up hey take this this is like your favorite thing the movie doesn't waste a single second and none of the jokes fall flat i mean a couple of them i think push the internet humor a bit too far and i can see some people getting rubbed the wrong way early on by that but I think once you get on this movie's wavelength and really see what it's going for, and this is a story that, like we said, feels familiar, but this version with this world and these characters could only really happen now. I did expect a phone bad story, yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't. The movie goes out of its way to say technology isn't the problem. Maybe the bad guy is the person who treated me like this. Poke, poke, swipe. I try not to throw this term around lightly, but I would say this movie is perfect. The story it's trying to tell, the character arcs it's trying to explore, and the message it's trying to convey. I felt really inspired by this movie in a way, because this did feel like a very personal story, and a very authentically emotional exploration of, of the dynamics of family, and, and why people grow apart, and what is really at the core of these dynamics. And it was able to do all of that and have a giant laser-breathing Furby. I could talk for hours about the Furby sequence. I could write a thesis about the Furby <laughs> sequence. <laughs>
it's because the characters are also so realistic and going through such relatable issues. I mean, we can do a roll call of the Mitchell family if you want. Aaron has uh, trouble finding friends. Linda has issues with the with this new social age and not knowing if her family is good enough and always comparing her family to the ideal families she sees online. Katie just wants to know that her family has her back as she's moving to a new chapter in her life. And Rick is just scared that his daughter is going to make the same mistakes and have her dreams hurt her in the in the long run it's not just the writing either you can take pretty much any frame from this movie and i'd be happy to have that as my desktop wallpaper for oh, yeah. like years that's why animation is such a wonderful medium for stories like these because you can do whatever you want and the motto of this new age this post spider-verse age of western animation seems to be yeah F it. Let's do whatever we want. And it hasn't failed yet. Has the world gone mad? It just feels like every creative team on this, every single person was just firing on all cylinders. It kind of feels like we're reinventing the wheel of what the template of your average american animated kids movie can be because pixar used to be the template and people have been trying to ape pixar forever yeah but i feel like we might see this next generation come up and be inspired by things like this by this this just infectious energy that projects like this and spider-verse have and in that vein i don't want a sequel to this i want this to be its own thing it is its own story you could do something else but it tells this story so perfectly and just feels so complete. I'm just excited for whatever Sony Animations has in store for us next at yeah. this point, honestly. If this is what can be expected of their fresh IPs, like, keep them coming. Yeah, like, absolutely. I will eat this up. Yum, yum, good. The thing about discussing a movie I love this deeply is eventually it just devolves into going, and this scene is good, and yeah. this scene is good, <laughs> and this joke is great. And I don't want to do that, but this movie is just all stuff I like. It is from beginning to end stuff I like. Even the dog in this movie has a character arc. <laughs> <laughs> the main character is a film student, and she's not insufferable. You know how hard that is to do? Now, I've met maybe three film students who weren't insufferable in my time, and I was not one of them. Uh, can we talk about Linda going f***ing ape mode and yes. just destroying <laughs> the robots? <laughs> what a perfect direction that is for her character. I am Linda Mitchell, mother of two! Look upon me in fear! Nothing in this movie feels like it shouldn't be there. I feel like if you take away any joke, you would miss something significant. And yeah. that's incredibly hard to pull off. Come on. And also insane that Live Your Life by T.I. feet Rihanna has now like come full circle into nostalgia <laughs> because this movie made me actually like the Maya He Maya Ho song. What, what is that song called? The Numa Numa was the original. The, right. And then they yeah, sampled yeah. it for, which in retrospect, Incredibly weird sample for like a mainstream <laughs> pop song, like Numa Numa. It is such an annoying song. <laughs> it's awful. I hate it. What the, what is this? As someone who can see a lot of parallels between their life and the movie, not just the film student thing, but there's there's a lot in there. <laughs> um, watching this movie feels like an experience I've always wanted to have if that makes sense. I feel like this is a film experience that you couldn't have in live action. Yeah, and my greatest regret, maybe in my life, is that we didn't get the chance to see this in a theater. When a story works, the character feels more like a person than a character. Yeah. And Katie lives and breathes in this movie, as mm -hmm. do all the other characters, including yeah. side characters and villains. And the fact that the defining visual cue for Katie is literal cartoons flashing and like crazy animation and that still feels so human and real it feels like the kind of creative energy that i like to think i have at times and i don't <laughs> <laughs> i really don't but but it's super far away you'll never it's make 80 miles away what are you doing to me right now the building blocks that it's using for its jokes are things from everyone's everyday lives mm -hmm. like we're all around phones and computers and 
fathers and brothers and sisters, you know, that's how you make a good, relatable family film. I genuinely don't think anyone will have a bad time with this movie. Anyone anywhere could enjoy this movie on some level, I think. If Disney is just going to skate by on these lazy cash grabs and it falls to other studios to be the innovators, fine. I hope more projects like this are what we see and less stuff like The Secret Life of Pets 19 or what the f*** ever, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's a masterpiece. I feel like I've said enough. I don't. This is just going to turn to gushing <laughs> if, if I go on. This whole video has just been various ways of us <laughs> saying watch this movie. So if you haven't watched this movie yet and you watch this video, you probably got some good things ruined, but I can promise you the movie will still blow you away. I guess I can say this. Some movies do some things really well this movie does everything really well yeah that's that that's it that's the end of the video <laughs> i'm gonna stop it right here okay <laughs>